Alright, welcome back everybody. Mark 4.5 construction continues. I know it's been a second since I uploaded a video here. Honestly, I get a little bit excited myself about constructing this baby. Sometimes I get so excited that I'm kind of like, Ugh, I don't feel like editing together a video right now. By the way, anybody that wants to support the project, I do have merch. I have a Patreon as well. I appreciate everybody and anybody who does want to support me in any way. All funds do go into the construction of Mark 4.5. So what you see me doing here, well, as I was constructing these blades, right, I was showing people on my social media. So everybody follow me on, on all my socials, Instagram, TikTok, everything, nature job everywhere. People told me I should put some ribs between the blades because they looked a little bit flimsy. So, you know, normally I don't really take these types of engineering suggestions because I've built these blades before and there was a reason I had them the way they were, but I was like, you know what? We're gonna see if that works, the little rib idea. Um, ultimately, spoiler spoiler alert, I had to take the ribs out because it actually kind of hurt the functionality of the blades. That it was allowing them to get caught up on things due to my, um, my cutting imperfections, since of course, I am human. But you know, I did give it a go. So now I had to ram these blades in there, like we're in Ram Ranch. And let me tell you something, right? This was not easy to get these blades in this machine. It was really not. I mean, you may be thinking it was. Like, oh, come on. Just shoving the blades down this thing's mouth. But trust me, mate. It was not easy to get those blades in there, right? Because not only, you know, are the tolerances pretty tight, but this is just metal to metal, right? This is like metal bumping and grinding like Diddy does with R. Kelly, right? Like, this is not going to be easy no matter how you put it. It's not lubed up right. I mean, come on now. Like, this at this point... Anyways, once I got them in there, you see, I was just doing a little spin test. They spin very rough. Once again, this is because of those ribs in there. So, when it comes to the shaft, how do I seal this shaft, right? We're going to have a spinning shaft. How the heck do I keep that airtight, vacuum tight? Well, you, I have to first weld in that keyway gap, right? And have that solid metal. And you see, I slide on this uh, union. And what that's going to allow me to do is actually have a little bit of gap of space where I could put my shaft seal over that. And um, at that point, that will pretty much seal the shaft and keep it airtight. It's just a, a rubber uh, shaft seal. So it's a pretty simple form of engineering. But you do have to be perspicacious and think about, you know, how that's going to work ahead of time. So you can kind of see the shaft seal there. It has springs compressing it down. I have the bearing in front of that. And the bearing is... Uh, is what we need to make sure that this, you know, stays stable and put as we spin this thing. So I welded on some all thread nuts to the tank and the all thread itself is just threaded into the nuts so that way I can always remove the all thread. So after I, you know, got the, the bearing on there, it was just a matter of that point of just seeing how does it spin. Still spun very rough, but also these blades are very heavy too, right? So I can't expect them to spin nicely, nice like or nothing. After that was the gearbox. So the gearbox, this is what the motor's mounted to. This is a hundred to one gearbox, meaning that every time we spin the top of it a hundred times, the output shaft spins once. So that gives it quite a bit of torque. And we need that because we want low RPM, so that way we can have the least amount of power consumption with the motor. And it's gonna be a DC one horsepower motor. So I got the mounts for the motor here. Just cut it out, drilled it out, welded it on there. I don't know what I was thinking here. Honestly, I really should have covered up my gearbox when I was welding. You see all that spatter. I mean, the gearbox is aluminum, so it's not going to be as effective as if it feels like stainless. But sometimes, may I just do these things. I don't know what I'm thinking. Clearly, I'm not thinking. So, skipping after that, I had to actually expand the bottom uh, output where the carbon is going to fall out. Okay? Uh, and you're probably asking why. Well, I expanded that because it was not big enough before for the carbon to fall through. So after I did that, you see, I had the motor mounted. Once again, I was welding without it, the motor being covered. I don't know what I was thinking. But I, then I got all of these uh, ports welded on there. Pressure relief valve, temperature ports. And you can see there the hole that got expanded for the carbon. But the issue is that hole was actually super warped. So the tri-clamp fitting for that six inch tri clamp did not work. So I had to modify some stuff. I had to hand fabricate a cone, weld on a four inch tri-clamp fitting, and pretty much 
make my own tri-clamp cone because I looked online to get a six inch to four inch cone was like a hundred something dollars and I'm like that's just not in the budget for a simple piece so I gotta build it myself because I needed to go from six inches to four inches right so I was like to build it myself and my six inch tri-clamp flange on the reactor got warped to absolute piss right that thing was not uh functional at all would not create a seal so had to get up under there had to get down and dirty in the trenches there and just weld that thing overhead and it worked out fine so at that point the output set shaft was dealt with the motors mounted to the gearbox and boom turn it on see what happens the blades actually spun and they spun pretty good i mean you know once i removed those ribs and did a little bit of adjustments you know ground down some parts that may have been catching the blades worked fine I have to speak on to anybody that may have questions about these blades, right? Or to answer your questions preemptively. You hear these blades, you obviously hear it's metal to metal. Obviously, they're they're um, grinding on the metal. When we have this machine on, plastic to fuel in this machine, plastic creates tons of oils, tons of carbon, tons of wax. All that forms a, a, a layer, and it's no longer metal to metal. So what I'm doing here is I actually have this tri clamp thing, which is a part of the feed system. And I have to weld these fittings to it. And these are going to be vacuum fittings, okay? So I can put in a vacuum gauge. I can also put in a vacuum line. So that way, when we load the plastic into the top valve, we can actually suck out all the air. I'll show that later on a different video. But that was just me kind of doing that there. I know I'm kind of all over the place in this video. But when I was building these blades, I was certainly all over the place. Just doing a ton of things. <laughs> Next, after the blades were built... Or the wave guides, right? So where are the wave guides? The wave guides are actually pretty much barrels for microwaves, the mounts for the magnetrons. The magnetrons that will create the microwaves and the wave guides are like I said, a barrel for the microwaves to direct them into the chamber. So for every single magnetron that we have on this, we have to build a wave guide, a corresponding wave guide. So I told you guys my goal is to have at least 12 mounts or 12 potential magnetrons. So I need 12 wave guides. And this includes two parts the part the magnetron is mounted to and the part that the waveguide is welded onto the actual reactor itself so it's it's two flanges as you see one for the magnetron and one that is welded to the chamber itself so this is the one that's welded to the chamber i have to cut out the hole and these things take a while to build i know they look small and simple but trust me like i'll tell you right now I work very hard, I work obsessively, I'm crazy with it, but no matter how hard and quick I work, it always takes a whole complete day to build and install a waveguide. Every time. I've never been able to do it quicker than that, no matter what I do. So nonetheless, I'll go ahead and install this, and I know you saw before I already had one on there, and that one was just one day I was just, um, I was building that one, and my camera had run out of space. So I couldn't get the footage of that. But the good thing is these are all the same. So you see me built this one. Got to cut out the sheet metal. Got to weld it all together. Have to have the flanges. Have to drill the holes. You know, it's pretty. And then you just rinse and repeat. And as you see, we have the wave guide there. You see the one next to it. The magnetron was mounted on there already. Uh, and unfortunately, this camera lost focus completely. When I, but all I was doing here was just kind of cleaning up the welds. And uh, I had some other footage after this point actually ended up getting uh, lost or perhaps the SD card didn't write it properly but essentially all that footage was was me just mounting the other flange for the wave guide to the face of that one that we just welded to the chamber so it's a pretty simple process going on from there and then at that point you know we, we have two magnetrons out of 12 mounted a lot more work to do but the good thing is we're getting closer and closer and in fact now that we have the blades installed, we have the waveguides installed, you know, all you need is a minimum of one. The machine is now at this point officially ready for test running, right? So if I want to do test runs, I can definitely do it now. So anyways, that is pretty much this whole process here of all the updates on the machine. Thank you very much for your support and for waiting quite some time for me to get to this point uh, on getting this video out because I know I've been taking my, my sweet bloody time on that one. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll have the next video out hopefully pretty soon compared to this one. Uh, Nature Jab out.